He doesn't own it, but his wife is a daughter of the owner. Let's put it that way. And so we were talking and you know, expanding that. And my question to you guys is that, it, do you go to auctions like that and ever buy homes? Because they do a lot of that in Bowling Green. They have the auctions and you go and you bid on those homes. And they're, I mean, they're all sizes and kinds and shapes. I think what they do is they put them on the market and then they, they don't turn as fast. So they put them in an auction. I, I don't really know because there's no rhyme and reason to which ones you're going to see auction to. You know, an auction is a, is a phenomenal strategy depending on who the auctioneer is, the auction house, and depending on how much of advertise it, that there's a lot of it depends going on there. But I certainly would get a hold of their auction list. I would do my due diligence on what's on the list and due diligence sometimes means driving by and looking through the windows. So because a lot of times you don't get access to what you're about to bid on. So you want as much insider information as you can. Most of those you have to show up with money orders in certain increments like 2,000, 1,000, 5,000, 20,000. So when you do get awarded the house, you actually give them the money orders right there on the spot. So it's like a cash transaction using using cashier's checks. I said money orders, cashier's checks, same thing, right? So you're actually paying for the house there on the spot. You do have to register. My suggestion is register and be on their list. Go through the process and always know what the house is worth before you sit down in the seat. Sometimes they do put, um, um, they put their own people in the audience to bid up the price, right? So you got to be mindful of what's going on there. Um, and um Sometimes they will, um, it's, it's, it's very discerning, but it, it sometimes is an, an, an above the board auction. So you just have to be, you have to be very, very situationally aware of what's going on at the auction. I will also say that I've seen situations where one guy got a price for the house and the next guy got the same exact model match for 20 grand less because that's where the bidding stopped. And he went and arm wrestled them and got that same price that the guy after him got. So just know that wow. everything's everything's negotiable sitting in an auction. My experience is limited, but that's what I know from my experience. And is it an absolute auction is a question that I would ask. Uh, meaning is yeah. the final price the price or is there a set bid that it has to be at before it goes? There's just so many variables involved with that. So getting to know that auction house, the best one is the one where they don't know how to market. So there's very few people in the audience. That is the best auction possible that you could possibly go to. If you show up and there's hundreds of people there, probably not going to be the best auction. Okay, What's been your experience exposure guys? Anybody else have any input on that? Went to a couple. Um, I bought one on, on an online auction, the one I'm working on still. And it was kind of like, um, Rob said, you, you just peek through the windows. And the other thing we did too, is we looked on realtor.com and Zillow and the house had been tried to be sold before. So we looked at all the pictures from all the, from those times. So you might find that property on Zillow or on realtor and be able to kind of get you know, peeks into it that way and, and see what the value used to be. Cause I think it doesn't Zillow, maybe, maybe realtor.com does too, but kind of shows what it's sold for in the past and the value of the place. So, it, so you can kind of get some history by snooping around and, and that's what we did on that one. And then um, the other one I went to, I went to an auction and I looked, looked at the house and it really wasn't interested, but I, I wanted to go through that process. And it was one of those where you had to bring cashier's checks and, and in denominations, like Rob said, and I watched it being sold. I didn't bring even money cause I didn't want it. I just wanted to go through that process. And right. it was at, it was at the courthouse and that, you know, you step inside the foyer at the court, courthouse and there was a company there and they basically had their auction right there at the courthouse and, and somebody bought it and I wouldn't have paid with, I thought they paid too much for it, but that's whatever that's their problem but anyway so that yeah so i'd go through the process at least and and you know register i did register and i did all that stuff so i could could have bought it but i didn't bring money because i wasn't interested so anyway yeah go through the process get familiar with it get comfortable with how it works and and then see how if there's any good deals 
Yeah, and that's good. That's good insight because even if you don't register, I think you have to register to go and sit in the audience at, at most of these auctions. Some of them are right on the front lawn of the houses. Uh, that's how they do it in California from time to time. Is they just they advertise in the newspaper or no? I don't. I don't imagine they do it in the newspaper much anymore. It's probably online, but um, they do it right on the front lawn. And um, yeah, it's a strategy that um, that has worked uh, in different seasons of real estate. I haven't seen a whole lot of that recently. Uh, but maybe it's very common in your area. It's all it's all uh, market dependent uh, for uh, geographically and then market dependent for where we are nationally as far as what type of a climate that we're in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Haven't seen a ton of it recently, to be honest with you, but it's about, coming. I have about several off of auctions and a lot of times the public administrator for Pettis County, she will have the auction and I become friends with her because she was a customer of ours at Shelby's and she will always let me go in ahead of the auction uh, and um, it's always an older couple usually that has the home but you can kind of by just visiting them you can learn a lot <laughs> there you go there you go yeah and sometimes you know and just piggybacking on what Paula said there uh, did you want to say something else Paula that's fine oh, okay sorry about that um, you, just piggybacking on that, you can interview the neighbors and learn a lot about what, you know, if you happen to see somebody out in the yard or you're doing your drive-by to peek in the window, you learn a lot from this nosy neighbor. That's for sure. <laughs> just a quick conversation. I've learned a ton from the neighbors. Yeah. 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 yeah so um, I did buy one. I bought one at the courthouse steps. It happened to be one that I was the lender on. I had loaned a house flipper the money on the property. He had bit off more than he could chew and had too many going. Mine was the one that didn't get his attention and it never did get his attention. They never, I, I would go by there and look at it. And inside, I gave the guy months. He went MIA on me. I finally had to foreclose on him. So it went up for auction at the courthouse step. So I was there just bidding on my own house to get it back. And uh, yeah, so, and I, and I did. And I kept it for a rental for quite some time. Yeah, interesting process. Interesting process. I showed up as a newbie on the courthouse steps here in Phoenix. And what I didn't realize is kind of what you said, Rob, it's a small world down there and they don't like outsiders and they all will work against you uh, in unison with each other. And so, um, yeah, I, I ended up going with a bidding service because really that's what they want you to do is use the bidding service. Oh, and, um, they charge like maybe three or four grand to bid for you. And what I don't like is they would want to call and get you on the phone. So you're kind of wrapped up in this thing as it's going live. And so what I ended up doing was just giving my highest and best and saying, don't call me because, you know, they really want you to, to get it. And uh, I've heard some horror stories about the auction. I do know a guy who bought a house at auction that had a dead horse in the basement and I don't know how it got there or what the story was behind it, but it was a nightmare for him. So you can get a peek in the window or get look in any way you need to. <laughs> it might not be able to smell that through the window. Yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. I had, I had flashbacks of freaking uh, Animal House, the movie Animal House. You guys remember when the, the, horse, the horse died in the dean's office? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's horrible. That's horrible, man. Oh, well, hey, here we are. We're sitting on the 11th of October. You know what that means, right? Everybody know what that means? It's the beginning of what? Q4. Fourth, Fourth quarter. quarter. Fourth quarter. Funny thing about those quarters, they come and go without us even paying attention if we're not paying attention, right? So it's an awesome time. It's not too late to sit and review.